kind of doing that sideways movement. So from an options perspective, um, how do you guys think is the best way to play that? Let me, let me throw that question out there. Actually, let me look at the questions and see what kind of uh, questions we got here. Good. Got a pretty decent crowd today, so awesome. You guys, please don't hesitate. Uh, I've spent, man, I've spent the last several days just finishing up a ton of recording that I'll, I'll share with you guys at the end of the webinar. Uh, should stir up a little excitement, but, uh, you know, whether, whether you're brand new or whether you're a very skilled options trader, please just type in a question there and uh, I will 100% get to it. Do any of you guys hear an echo? I was, I want to make sure that this, this, the sound is good. No, perfect. Okay, good. I was uh, tweaking with some settings a little bit and I heard a pretty bad echo on one of the other computers. All right, so what we got here. So as far as any questions here, no questions. Uh, waiting for the marks to finally crash. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, Fed minutes pending. All right, super. And so, yeah, all right. Well, we'll just, we will just get on going. So let me do this. Let me go basic with IVR. All right, so this is, uh, again, one of the indicator windows in thinkorswim that just gives you talking about volatility where the volatility level is at in uh, whatever underlying you're viewing or looking at so if i'm looking at spx if i want to look at you know deckers is a trade that we're going to talk about today and or if i want to look at disney that was a chart that i talked about uh, this past week you know we want to know where the options are trading at and how they are priced in relationship to where they have been in the prior one or two or three years. And this gives you a good a good visual of where the volatility is at for options. So again, if we want to just let's just go back and let's just talk about this for a, for a brief second, you know, the whole game of options trading is you are you are buying and selling time and you are leveraging your position against shares of stock. And for every one option that you buy or sell, you are controlling either long or short 100 shares of stock. So if I have if I want to model buying 100 shares of Decker, right? That's what it gives me. I Deckers goes up, I make. Deckers goes down, I lose. There's no time component to it at all. And just so you know, um, this is how I used to have my screen. And I've changed it to this because it's going to help you guys see visually uh, profit and loss along these little bars down here. So if any of you notice that that's different, uh, that's where you change it at, right here. Okay, It lets you just kind of toggle back and forth between uh, different trade profiles but when you are long 100 shares of Decker stock that is your risk profile dotted T plus zero line tells you what today's is this gives you the expiration graph which it will default to 365 days from now because you'll own this stock forever right options on the other hand they have defined time periods when they're going to expire and they're gonna, these will expire in three days, these will expire in 31 days, 59 days, etc. And you'll see that on a price chart, or on an options chain, where it, it will tell you in the layer how many days until these options expire. So all we are doing as options traders are we are, we are controlling shares that we don't own, right? By buying or selling options. And when we do that, well, what we're doing is we are saying we are just controlling time. And if I if I sell an option for one price and I buy an option for another price, all right, I need to I need to understand that it's no different than I'm buying a pair of tennis shoes, I'm buying a coffee mug, I'm buying a vehicle, I'm buying a house. It doesn't matter what the underlying asset is. You are buying an option that's going to expire. 
So at some point you have to sell it. If you buy it, you have to sell it. And so we, we want to be aware, another little side note, you'll see I removed SanDisk and added Disney into the 30 stocks that I want to look at. If we are looking at a chart like Disney that has low volatility, well that means that these options are going to be relatively inexpensive if we want to buy them, but if we want to sell them, we're not going to be generating as much premium uh, as when the volatility is higher. So option sellers prefer much higher volatility environment, right? So when the volatility gets up here, say above this green line, for example, it's a, bit, it's a big play at Tasty Trade. Wait till the IVR gets above 50 to sell premium. You can sell premium anywhere you want, but if you're selling premium when the volatility is low, that just means you're you're trying to essentially sell wholesale and buy it back at retail. It's a it's hard game to play, not impossible, but it's much harder than I come up here and if I'm selling an option trade or I'm selling premium, I'm selling retail and I'm just trying to buy it back at at wholesale when the options get cheaper. Does that make sense? I mean, you guys understand that that uh, approach, right? We want to buy cheap, sell high. We want to sell high, buy cheap. And so by creating some of these option spreads, we want to be aware of where the volatility level is trading at. So I use the chart of Disney just for a, for a quick example. Here, Disney missed earnings, right? They estimated $1.40. They came in at $1.36. They missed earnings. They got absolutely punished, gap open. Now we've gapped under the 200 day moving average and we've had five consecutive bearish days. Now we're right on that, you know, that pivot point that up until this area here, that was, it touched, it touched, it touched. I mean, you guys see where I'm talking about, right? Right here, this, uh, we need this little guy right here. We touched here, we touched here, we touched here, and then we finally broke through and then we came back and we revisited the 200 <clears throat> day moving average, but the earnings completely violated that, gapped open, and now we're trading down. So if you are looking at taking a trade or making a play on Disney and you want to say, I need to ask myself one of two questions, do I... <clears throat> want to take a directional trade or do I want to take a non-directional trade? That's what you have to ask yourself. If I want to take a directional trade, am I, all right, that word, this is where it gets a little tricky because then you start to have to make decisions, right? Now, if I'm going to take a directional trade, am I going to trade it directionally long or am I going to trade it directionally short? And that will be, you know, how you approach the setup for your options trade. If I am no opinion and I'm just gonna say well you know what I don't think this gaps gonna fill I think the 200 is gonna be some overhead resistance I'm I think we're just gonna stay sideways here but um, you know I'll wait until I uh, the market proves me wrong so then you you put a trade on that has no directional opinion it's Delta neutral and each day that passes in time that it doesn't move anywhere you collect daily theta and so all that theta means is each each day that passes as you get closer this option expiring if we look at we go way out here in time say 248 days from now these options expire the third Friday of January 2017 you can see layered all up in here the what the option prices are going to cost you and so six dollars and eighteen cents for this one is the same strike price just different time much closer to expiration than this one at 453 so the closer you keep getting to expiration that that time value that option price is decreasing until at expiration right your option price 
is going to be either in the money or out of the money. It's either going to be 100% intrinsic value, meaning that this option that is now in the money, it's in the money on the call side here, the uh, above 100 is in the money on the put side, is now there's no time value left. Time has gone. Time is wound down, it's over. And you'll notice that as you get, say we'll just open up this one here, when you get deeper in the money on these options, this is the put side, deeper in the money, you still have options that trade, but if there's no open interest and no volume, all right, let's, this person right here, there is somebody that owns an option contract at the 65 strike price for, for Deckers now, we're talking about Deckers. I mean, I can go to Disney, but you'll see that there's one option right here that somebody has bought and another party has sold at the 65 strike price that's going to expire in two days. So I wanna ask you a question. If you are this person right here and you, are, you have bought this put option, that means that you have the right but not the obligation to put this 100 shares of stock to somebody at $65 a share. If you have sold that option contract to somebody, you're gonna get the stock put to you and you have to go out and purchase that at $65 a share and give it to that person who bought it. So the person who bought this put option is extraordinarily happy, depending on what their you know, price was that they paid for it. The person who sold this is not so happy, unless you have something to protect it, all right? So that's why we don't ever sell naked options. We're always going to have a protective hedge, <clears throat> and that's what a, a calendar trade is. You're buying and selling options simultaneously. So I'm, I'm seriously, I'm not trying to make this oversimplified, but I really feel like I need to take a step back and just unpack you know, these option spreads, what it is that we're trying to accomplish, how they actually perform, and, and why when I start saying, well, I'm looking at a chart that has low volatility, why that influences or why that impacts a trade. 